in less than 100 lines of code, I'm going to show you how to make this. It's very simple, obviously, but it's um, it works, right? You have a Pokeball and you have a Pokemon. You flick the Pokeball at the Pokemon. If you miss, uh, it resets. Um, uh, but if you hit, if you manage to hit the Pokemon, it plays um, the hit sprite. So you'll see it kind of shake and tremble um, as it gets sucked into the Pokeball. Um, it's also got augmented reality, so you can see it. I'm capturing everything in the background so that was a seed Pokemon uh, and I'm in the garden uh, as you can see it's capturing everything in the background so I'll show you how this is made now so first things first here you go here's the um, all the code uh, and as you can see 95 lines of code um, less than 100 it's not <laughs> it's not the best looking code because obviously if I've, I've removed a lot of the white spaces since if I didn't remove the white spaces, it would also it would also include those here. So I just wanted to show you um, that you, it's fairly it's fairly simple to do, and I'll just talk you through it um, really quickly how this works. Um, on the right hand side, we can see I've got this working in the simulator, um, so you can see it working on my computer when, while the while the code is running too. Um, it's important to know though this runs on iOS since it uses to do the augmented um, augmented reality. It uses a very simple line of code. It's it's brilliant actually. I'm I'm, I'm so impressed by uh, Corona um, since it's just this one line of code here, uh, which takes the background a background image. Um, in this case, it's a rectangle uh, that fits the full size of the screen, the width here and the height. Um, it takes it and it fills it with the, the fill of uh, the camera so everything I'm filming with the camera is now the background which is great right? one line of code uh, pretty much um, so that reduces uh, coding by a massive amount the thing is this only works on iOS uh, so you can't see the background on the on obviously on, on my my laptop because um, I'm I'm not filming anything I don't have a, a back a camera for the back um, and it doesn't currently doesn't work on Android um, since uh, I don't think Corona, the guys from Corona have had a chance to, to get to that point yet. Maybe they will in the future. Um, so for now, I just throw up a, a temporary image. But you know, you've seen from the video that it does work on iOS. Uh, and I've got some code here that just checks if it's Android. If it's Android, just it just has a simple garden image, which is the image that you see here. If it's not, then it uses that camera fill as you saw in that previous video. So. Um, uh, just quickly talking you through this, the first thing that happens is it, it makes a new ball. Um, so the new ball is this Pokeball here. If I go to the make new ball code, it, first it checks if there's already a ball. If there's not already a ball, which is what you'll have now, it creates a, a small ball. It adds physics to it. So um, but it's important to note here that the radius is um, a quarter of the size of the, the full width of the ball so it's half the size of the regular ra radius so it's actually um, it's about from the center point to here a radius is usually the full size uh, but in this case I've made it smaller and I'll I'll tell you why I've done that um, again it's just for simplicity's sake in this particular case uh, then I add a touch to the ball and I add collision to the ball so now that means um, the touch um, the touch uh, code is here so all this does is when you're about to flick it it remembers as soon as you tap down uh, which is the begin function here it recall it remembers it stores the x and y value in two variables here start start x and start start y and then when you let release the touch i.e. when you flick it it subtracts the end values of the you know the last point that you, you, let, you let go of the pokeball from those values generating new values which is the amount of kind of flick we're creating and I times that by one for now just and I throw that into and apply a set uh, a linear impulse uh, to the ball which is how you get this kind of movement here which I'll throw now um, if I flick the ball there you go um, so you'll notice something here it, firstly it rotates and I get the rotation using the amount x which is the the amount I'm flicking from the left and right so if I flick it this way um, there you go, you'll notice that the start point here which is where I clicked and I let go here so it span a lot to the left and if I start here and I let go here you'll notice that it spins more to the right um, and I didn't apply any upward 
Y uh, for, uh, force. So, uh, sorry, I uh, didn't change that really at the start and the end was almost exactly the same, which is why it just rolled. Um, and I've also got this ground floor here. Um, so once it's once it's, it now has this kind of movement here, which is quite powerful, really, really when you throw it up. The next thing it does is it has start at uh, start um, start attack. Um, so start so start attack is <laughs> it's just here, and what that does is firstly it removes the touch event on the pokeball. So once I flick it up, I can't flick it again. So that's important. We don't want the person to keep flicking the ball. The next thing it does is it creates a transition line of code, which is over the next two seconds, it changes the ball's width to half the size as well as the height. So that's why I use 0.25 of diameter because I, it actually is going to be a, a quarter of the full size and half the radius um, earlier on here um, when I first generated the ball. Um, so yeah, so if anyone ever tells you you never have to look at radiuses of Pythagoras or algebra after you leave school, tell them that's not the case um, if you do programming because uh, you definitely do look radiuses right there. Uh, okay, so once this line of code is finished, this transitioning, let's just shrunk the size of the ball, it has enemy live. So this now gives this a physics body so actually it doesn't have a physics body you'll notice even though the ball is hit is going is crossing the path of oh I uh, messed up there actually um, if I do this it crosses the path of the it crossed the path of the seed but it didn't actually collide and the reason why is because it didn't have a physics body um, after two seconds which is about the amount of time a good amount of time. By that time, you've probably thrown it over the, the seed, and at, at this time, it's, it looks like it's falling because we're shrinking the shrinking the ball in this code. Um, at this time, we we start the enemy and we start a timer. So this timer means that in four seconds time, we're going to reset the entire game. You saw that make new ball code again. This time there is a ball, so it, it will remove the physics and it will reset the position of the ball. So that's if I miss in four seconds time, it will reset and bring it back here. There we go. However, I also start the enemy. So now the enemy has a physics body and a radius. So now if I throw the ball up um, after two seconds, one, two, now it has a physics body. Um, and once it gets hit, it gets attacked. So I've Given it a physics body, and earlier on we get, we added a collision piece of chunk of code to the ball. So, where's that collision, and how's that getting handled? So here, we, here that that here, that's here. So what happens is, as soon as a collision takes place, so as soon as that ball hits that um, Pokemon, uh, we play enemy hit code. So we'll look at that in a second. But we also have the enemy sprite set sequence to hit. And we play that. So now what we've done is I skipped over to the start, but right at the beginning, what we did is we I create a, um, a sprite sheet, which is just this code here. Um, so we have this image, seed sprite tiny, and it has about four. It has four frames on it, which you can see here, and each frame is slightly different, um, which is how we get this different effect. So at the start, we play idle which is exactly what you're looking at here is two frames left and right and when it gets hit it has tends to the hit sequence which is more of a shaking one um, so that's what happens when it gets hit it also calls enemy hit and enemy hit applies a few transitions so it, it flies up into the air and then it and then um, as you saw it, it it changes the alpha of the oh I missed uh, <laughs> the alpha of the, um, the sort of transparency of the seed so it vanishes uh, which you can see here um, and then the ball we also remove the physics of the ball as well um, so we don't sorry, we don't we don't remove it we remove the collision because we don't need the collision to happen again and um, we change 
the physics to static. So at the moment, so static just means it stays still, um, since that's kind of what happens in the game. Uh, I think it just stops at the, at the point that you, you manage to successfully hit it. So it works. That's, that's basically the whole chunk of code where you're looking at less than 100 lines of code. You've got that. Uh, and of course, you've got that uh, um, the augmented reality, which I think is really powerful with just one line of code. So there's loads of different things you can do with this. You could give the um, you could give that Pokemon some health. You could give yourself a few Pokeballs here, maybe three. And if you miss, you know, things get reset. You could have that Pokemon moving from left to right to make things more difficult. You could even have them attacking and maybe you have some health. Um, but I want to show you if you're new to programming and you want to take a look at this and you want to see whether it's easy or difficult, hopefully you can follow this fairly simply. Um, and if you don't know about Corona, Corona SDK, um, I'll leave a link in the description, then um, check it out, especially if you're new to development. It's great for 2D development. I am using it on a game, so, um, and if you want to know about the game, you can check out the game I'm, I'm currently making. Uh, it's a ninja game inspired by um, Japanese anime, so um, check that out if you get a, get a second. Um, and if you like this tutorial, or, or guess very brief tutorial, I, just, I didn't really go through the details, but if you liked it and you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments, or, or maybe I'll put something together. Um, but make sure you you um, you kind of share this and like this as well, it'll help uh, other people find out about it too. I think it's quite <laughs> it's quite relevant um, since Pokemon is doing so well. And I think it's um, what's really cool about this is it shows you how simple the game is. Um, but how they've done such a good job by taking such a simple concept and and making it you know so playable, so many downloads so quickly, um, and it shows you that games don't have to be that complicated, which I think is is really cool, especially if you're a beginner. Um, so the code is on um, on Bitbucket. I'll leave a link in the description. You can download it and free free to use this as much as you like all the code and hack it apart. Uh, I'm sure I've done it in less than, you know, 100 lines of code, but I'm sure it could have been done in a lot less. Um, I'm fairly, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was a great programmer, so um, I know someone else could hack this and do this in, in probably maybe even half the amount. And if you can, <laughs> go ahead. I'd love to see that. I'd love to learn from it myself. Um, all right, well, that's, that's me done. Uh, I hope you liked the tutorial. Um, if you like more, again, let me know. And, of course, like, comment, all that kind of stuff. Um, and see you, see you in a couple of weeks time for an update on the hero that I run. Take care. Bye.